we will all offer the prayer of meditation. Father of forgiveness, as long as we confess, you will forgive us. At this time, we believe that you will make us a blessed man. With that blessing, may we and our children do well. May we give profit to our country and be patriots to our country, our people. And may we do the work of bringing about world peace. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. As at the new, as we enter the new year, um, we need the lunar calendar because of farming. But the American calendar, they don't use the lunar calendar yet. Their farming does well. Korea, they use the lunar calendar, but the South does well, but the North doesn't. So we have to realize. So how do we have to live in this new year? We have to live as a man. The duty of man. Let's find Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 13. So we have to fulfill the duty of man. That is a man. After having a high seat. And then after you leave that seat to to not be considered a man so why is it that you don't do well because we don't do the duty of man let's read the conclusion when all has been heard is fear God and keep his commandments because this applies to every person so we have to be as a man we have to live as a man that means whether a Christian life, whether you're a leader, whatever you do. We have to be a man. We have to do the duty of man. So what is it first? We have to fear God, which is one heart, one way. So if you don't do one heart, one way, the mystery of God forced at repentance, you're not a man. God says, Psalms chapter 49 verse 20, that you are a beast that perishes. So because you cannot distinguish between a man of honor and a beast that perishes, that's why you you look at a dog pig and you say, oh teacher or sir or that's why you become crazy. This seems so easy but if I'm not right, I can't say right things. If you're a dog pig, you say to a dog pig, "Oh, uh, you you honor them." But if you're if you're not, then you don't do that. So what is one heart, one way? It's to go to heaven. If you go to a fake church and you ask if they're going to heaven, they say yes. But God says, if you don't do one heart, one way, if you don't fear God, you can't go to heaven. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 23. You know, you hear rebuke that you don't say amen. It's not because of the rebuke that you say Amen. After you you hear the rebuke and you repent, that's when you feel refreshed and that's when you say Amen. That's when you and your children do well and you can give profit to your country. So the teachers, when you were at school, if your teacher never rebuked you, you don't remember those teachers. But the teacher that, you know, they put their knuckles on your head, that's a teacher you remember. So rebuke makes you shine. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 13. You say amen, but when you hear rebuke, your lip sticks out. So this this truth, this rebuke of truth, you may have be upset when you hear it, but later you realize, oh, you know, our pastor is the best. So we have to do the duty of man. What is first? It is to fear God, one heart, one way. So I do well, my children do well, and God follows us to to make us do well. And so we go to heaven. So the duty of man is one heart, one way. If we fear God, we block disasters, we do more well, we go to heaven. So it's not just that, but we also have to keep His commandments. So which commandments do we have to keep? 
So you say that you're keeping the commandments, but why is it that you don't receive blessings? It's because you hate to keep God in your heart. Where does this come from? So if you backbite others, that a church that backbites others or has arguing, 100% they will go to hell. So in order not to go to hell, those demons here that don't say amen or, 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 or argue and grumble, we, we cast them out. So why is it that the master threshes the wheat? Why is it that... So it's the chafe that has to depart. So in, in Jesus' hand is a thresher, Matthew chapter 3, verse 12. This is a church where, where Jesus himself is working. That's why even though you hate to hear it, we keep rebuking. So if you hear rebuke and you say, Amen, that's a fake. After you repent and Christ comes into my heart, then God also enters. And Jesus and the Holy Spirit, when all of them enter into my heart, that person has the temple built in their heart. And that's when they say Amen. And that's when answers happen. Your desires will be fulfilled. And your destiny will be fixed. So we have to obey the word. What is it that we're not obeying? What is it that's crooked? Let's find 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 24. So, because this is crooked, that's why we're late in receiving blessings. So, what is the duty of man? It's first of all, one heart, one way, which is to fear God. So we start with one heart, one way. That is the duty of man. And then after that, it's to obey the word. What is it that we're not doing right so that we don't do well? So it's easy. It's one or the other. But it's because we always seek our greed. If you look in your family or amongst your friends, wherever you go, why is it that people don't like you? If you divide something equally, the same, let's say by one piece of one piece of grain, whoever takes that, that's someone who pleases themselves. So it's, it seems nothing, like nothing, but the one that didn't receive that extra grain Till the day they die, they say, oh, that person deserves to die. We laugh, but that's, that's what we're like. It's that small greed. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 24. Let no one seek his own good, but that of his neighbor. Amen. So it seems simple. All we have to do is keep the commandment. But always we seek our own profit first. Oh, I put myself first. Why is it that leaders, pastors, or the boss of a company, why is it that the person who stands in front doesn't receive respect? Because they always seek their own profit. Seems like they're not doing that, but if you dig deeper, they're seeking their own profit. That person cannot succeed. That's because it's, that's God's word. So it's to seek other people's profit. If you do that, it seems like disadvantage at that moment, but afterwards it is so good. So don't try and preach the gospel. Give profit to others. So yes, they may curse you at the beginning, but after time goes by, in the end they know. They know that you are someone who is always giving profit. This is God's commandment. We have to do this. That is the duty of man. So Galatians chapter 6 verse 7. What is it that you've planted that you and your children don't do, it, do well? Always you disadvantage others. And that's why always disadvantage comes back to me. Today let's not live like, I mean this year let's not live like that. So the sign that we've stuck up one heart one way this is amazing 
oh, why didn't we do this 10, 20 years ago? Well, back then you wouldn't have understood and people would have just cursed. But after 10, 20 years, even now there are crazy people who curse this, but they and their children will die. But those who realize, Matthew chapter 1, verse 1, there's now people who preach this sermon on the Christian broadcasting. And they talk up to um, Rahab the prostitute. So even if they just mimic, well, you know, that's how, like, the monkey evolves into a man. So if you look at the religious channels, if they just have the blood of Christ, then all religions will become one. You know, they say things like, oh, please forgive us the sins, as long as they have the blood of Christ. So this is the fruits of your prayers. This is proof that Korea will do well. So we have to obey the commandment, which is to always give profit to others. So today as you live, always two things will come in front of you. Are you going to seek your profit or someone else's? So if you've got nothing in your own profits or if you're in debt, what is it that you've planted? It's because you always seek your profit. You've lived oppositely to what God wants. So how should we live? The health that you have, the wisdom knowledge that you have, that the worldly knowledge that you have now, which is evil and demons, even that, what you have now, how is it that you should live to live according to the duty of man so that you and your children receive blessings? Let's find Luke. chapter 19 verse 15 so if you just understand this word so may you receive grace and I too from this time forth I'm going to live according to this word verse 15 when he returned after receiving the kingdom he ordered that these slaves to whom he had given the money be called to him so that he might know what business they had done. So just like we're being called to this place, verse 16, the first appeared saying, Master. So he says, Lord, that's someone who's entered into a deep grace. That's someone who receives help. So when you read the Bible, after we're cast out of the Garden of Eden, Genesis chapter 4 verse 14 we were cast out by the Lord you know when I asked someone they said something completely strange you know at the bank where you deposit and where you withdraw is different so so your mina has made 10 minas more So the health that you have, the wisdom and knowledge that you have, whatever your present situation, are you able to make tenfold? Are you diligent and do you give profit to others? When I look at this, I haven't. My excuse is, oh, well, God hasn't given it to me. Whatever you have now, you have to make tenfold. Whatever your present situation, you make tenfold. So this is what pleases God. Verse 17, And he said to him, Well done, good slave, because you have been faithful in a very... So here it says, good slave. So even Jesus did good works. The last conscience that you revive is the good conscience. We have to pay attention. If you don't go inside of the Lord, this is not something you can receive. So if I want to preach this sermon properly, I have to speak the whole day. 
But here, the master, he praises him as a good slave. He says, because you have been faithful in a very little thing, in whatever your present situation, you are to be in authority over ten cities. So those filthy people who say, I'm not doing well, who seek their own profit, who, who after they receive from God, they just bury it into the ground. That, someone, that person is not good. That person is evil. When I prayed, that was me. I was so afraid and I said, that's me and I confessed. And that's how I've come here. So don't say whether you've received or not. Whatever you have, you have to make tenfold. Then God says that you're a good slave. That means you have authority over ten cities. If you have ten cities, you have money, you have fame, you have power, you have you have saving of souls. So verse 18, the second came saying, so what does he say? Well, he says the same. He says, Lord, if you've repented of your sins and your ancestors' sins, then if you're able to say, Lord, then you have received help in order to do tenfold, fivefold. So I tell you to say, Amen. You know, I, I rebuke someone and I can't see that person. That type of person, if I say, can you watch over here for for one hour? They say yes, and then they just go off. If they're hungry, they go off to eat. They do whatever pleases themselves. That That person, they're cursed. They don't do well. They can't say, Lord. So that person cannot say Amen. So, so, so he has made five minas out of his one mina. So as much as you love God, as much as you have increased it, then you get to have authority over it. So what's it saying about you? It means in your present situation, you're not doing something. It's not something I can do. We have to meet the Lord. So just because you say Lord with your mouth, that's not how you meet Him. When you repent of your sins and your ancestors' sins, you become godly and you are not polluted by the world. James chapter 1, verse 27. So that person doesn't betray. They don't have excuses, grumblings. They're not a goat. You become a sheep. So what is a sheep? If a sheep 10 years ago, if you're the same size, then that's not right. A sheep, more and more as time goes by, you keep growing. You have more wool. You, you, you know, have babies. You feed those babies. And this all happens with no words. So that's who God raises. It's the sheep that go to heaven. Jehovah raises the sheep, not goats. Psalms chapter 100 and verse 3. So if you argue, or if you argue, um, if you make excuses, then you're a goat. So do you want to be with goats and die together? Or do you want to be, or, or should we make them either become sheep or as chafed apart? So Jesus, he pierced the thousands. The twelve remained, but the fakes, they all departed. That's in John chapter 6. So let's live as kernels. Let's be sheep. So does that mean a sheep just a sheep just stands there? No. The owner, if the sheep doesn't change, they'll get rid of it. The sheep has to naturally grow of itself. So then as much as you love, you receive. Here it says, you're, give, you're given five cities because the blessings are in front of you. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 15. So then another person, he also says, Lord, why? Because he, he copies what the others have said. And he says, another came saying, Master, here is your mina, which I kept put away in a handkerchief. For I was a f so it's, it's exactly as it was. 
You say, I don't have anything. You're exactly the same. That is a goat, someone who is going to hell, someone who will be ruined. Why is it that I repented? So yes, I did pray. How? How do I increase it tenfold? Even now I'm praying. And I, and I worry that I'll do things according to my thoughts. But, but this, this one talent man is just like me. You know, wrapping it up in this handkerchief. Let's read verse 21. For I was afraid of you because you are an exacting man. If you are afraid of God, if you are afraid of the Lord, you're a fake. And that's why Abraham, the ancestor of faith, Matthew chapter 1 verse 1, when he received the gift of faith, James chapter 2 verse 23, he became friends with God. Is there a friend that you're afraid of? No, you like them more than your parents. So if you are afraid of God, you're a fake. No, you should be so close with God. You take up what you did not lay down and reap what you did not sow. So that's why he had wrapped up his mina. So he's exactly the same as ten years ago. If you have a sheep or a cow that's exactly the same size as ten years ago, you'll either, uh, even after one year, you'll either catch it and eat it or, you know, sell it. So it's exactly as it was. I haven't touched it. That is someone who is evil. You have to use it to give profit to others. You have to increase it. But I don't have anything. Well, the little that you do have, you have to be faithful. Luke chapter 16 verse 10. If you are faithful, then God will give you greater things. So, if you know how to increase tenfold, then you have, you'll have receive ten cities, cities. If you are able to ride a tricycle, then yes, you can have a motorcycle. If you're able to use a Rolls Royce, then take it. So God permits it. The problem is me. I haven't done it. I haven't been faithful in what I've received. Even when I look at you, you you're not. But fakes, they sit. And they can't even do their work properly, and yet they meddle in other people's affairs. That's asking for death. So if you make excuses and grumble and complain, don't go the way of being worse than a dog. Let's go the way of becoming a man. So, this is how you can see fake churches and true churches are completely different. The sheep and goats are completely different. Verse 22, he said to him, By your own words I will judge you, you worthless slave. So this building, this vessel, I've just kept it exactly as it is. You are evil. You have to listen carefully. So you have to use it, increase it five, tenfold. So you evil slave, did you know that I am an exacting man taking up what I did not lay down and reaping what I did not sow? Then why did you not put my money in the bank and having come I would have collected it with interest. So you should have at least put it in the bank and at least received the interest. So that at least you could offer the interest. But you are so lazy and evil. But fakes, they like to just keep it exactly as it is. That person is cursed. They ruin themselves and their children. So a sheep, Psalms chapter 23, even though they're taken to the, to the waters and the pastures, if they're not taken there, they just stand, 
that they just stand. So if you go to Israel, there's not a blade of grass, and they just stand near the shepherd where the rocks are. Even though if they go just a little bit further, there there's green grass. So I I watch the older sheep, and they just stand there doing what they have to do. There's so how can they be raised up without any grass? They still grow. You don't even grow. That's a fake. So you end up being an evil slave. So you should at least bring back the interest. So what does God want? He doesn't want you just to be as you are. He wants you to grow. He wants you to do more well. So he doesn't say what. Does that mean you go and deal drugs? A good slave would not do that. Something that the country, the slave, doesn't want to harm others. No, that's not what it means. Whatever you do, you need to be someone who increases. So why is it that you don't do well? Look at your actions. Whether it be five years ago or ten years ago, you're still the same. So you're not a sheep. You're dead. If you haven't grown in five, ten years, you're dead. You're not living. So verse twenty-four. Then he said to the bystanders, "Take the mina away from him, and give it to the one who has the ten minas." What do we realize here? If I don't do my work properly, you can't do your work properly because you only do as well as the pastor in front of you. So I said to my wife, "I want to say to her again, the work of God. You have to at least bring back interest. You can't just stay the way you are. People who aren't doing well." What if if it's your health, or even if you have a dollar or two dollars, you have to increase that tenfold. But as you do it, you have to first give profit to others. If you do that, you will succeed. So, if in the small things you increase by ten or five, so if when it talks about the cities here, it's like talking about Busan or. Yesterday, you just did small things, but if you're faithful in those small things, then even if you receive a city, you're able to do it. That's how you become a leader. That's how you succeed. That's how you go to heaven, and that's how you pass blessings to your children. So whatever, whatever work you're given now, you have to increase by tenfold, or at least bring back the interest. That's what God wants. But if you go to a folk church, They always have these, these, these meetings. The sheep only follows the master. You have to go where there is a wise man to receive wisdom. If you go to a foolish man, you will receive harm. Proverbs chapter thirteen verse twenty. So who speaks the sermon of wisdom? Only the man of understanding. So that's why he doesn't write down the sermon, Psalms chapter forty-nine, verse three. So, what is your situation? In your present situation, you have to increase it five, tenfold. So, what God gives is not just the five, tenfold. It's He will give you five, ten cities, which unimaginable blessings. Unimaginable saving of the souls, unimaginable things. That's why we're here to receive this for me and my children. Let's receive it this year. So, what is your life like? Are you living like a man? From today, according to this word, let's not be an evil slave, but a good slave. Busan First Church. What I'm so thankful about. I've even prayed like this, Father. 
even though I don't have anything, what you've given me to spend, to take care of. You know, God said to me, don't make excuses. You're the, e you're the evil, lazy slave. You know what I experienced? There's no possibility yet. If I go towards being a good slave in front of God, blessings fly to me and He makes me be able to use it. But if I'm not, then God, He blocks the way. And I realize that I'm an evil slave. Let's only be sheep. Let's do the duty of man. Let's keep this duty of man, one heart, one way. Whatever word to obey, to do exactly. Someone who has a tiny shop will end up receiving 10 cities. We believe that God's promised blessings will come, will come upon us. May we all become a blessed man. Isn't this amen? May we all receive these blessings. Let's say to the person next to us, let's become good slaves. Let's become good slaves. This year, may we surely become like this. Oh, but I don't have anything. God's already given. Even with the body that you have, that's your wealth. You know, we're all wearing clothes that queens in the past didn't even get to wear. But because our hearts are filled with greed, you know, which queen in the past got to wear these t-shirts? They didn't even have it. Do you know what blankets were before in our country? They were leaves. And they collected these leaves. So if we've come this far, you know which queen got to ride a bus? But it's because your heart is bad. That's why you don't have Thanksgiving. You know, don't talk about your environment or how much salary your husband receives. Here, it doesn't say, oh, males aren't included or females aren't included. Anyone from today, let's live like a man. Then everything will do well. That means we'll do better five, ten times, even to our children. Today, let's call upon the Lord three times to be a good slave so that we have the right relationship with the Lord. You will do well. Let's surely give profit to others. After one heart, one way, to give profit to others. That's when you and your children will do well. Lord, Lord, Lord. Help us to be a good slave. Help us not to be an evil slave, but a good slave. Whatever we have now, to be faithful, to do the duty of man, to 